The real-time API is an extremely powerful piece of technology. However, you only really get the value from it when it's deployed into the real world. For example, in an app, a website, or what we will do today, a phone agent. If you are new to the world of voice AI, then you might ask, what is a phone agent? Now, a phone agent is simply an AI that is able to understand and hear another person on the phone, as well as then synthesize its speech back to the user. So essentially just a person or an AI that is able to talk to another person via a phone. We usually call them agents as the AI will have tools or functions allowing it to manipulate real world things like adding things to a database, booking times on a calendar, etc. And the real time API allows us to build voice AI agents, but we have to find ways to deploy it to a phone to make it a phone agent. In this video, I'll cover how to access the real time API via a platform called Retail AI, how to add and build functions to the agent, and finally, how to deploy it using Twilio so that you can start to have have a conversation with it on the phone. And all of this doesn't require any sort of coding. Okay, so the platform, like I mentioned earlier, that we're doing all of this on is called Retail AI. It is similar to platforms like Vapi, Synflow, Bland, all of them. It is another voice AI orchestration platform. I believe they are using LiveKit for their actual voice functionality. So it's more of a wrapper of sorts in the sense that it is the front end platform, uh, whilst LiveKit is the kind of back end. So if I show you what this is, it's the real time AI. AI. It's all to do with the voice stuff. It powers a lot of the chat GPT stuff. And I believe that retail AI is using this in the back end. Okay, so to start off, we're going to go and create an agent and show you how to actually access the real time API via the agent. So once you've logged on into the dashboard, you'll be seeing something like this. And to actually create an agent, I mean, it's pretty simple. You press create agent, single prompt agent, start from blank, and then we load into this kind of agent customization UI. Now up here is where where we have the option to choose the real time beta. And once you have this selected, you'll see we lose the option to test um, the LLM via text. So if I were to go back to GPT 4.0, you can see we can test the LLM via text, which is a little annoying that we do not have that option to test with the real time API, but that doesn't matter too much for now because we will still just test it with the voice. Then we have the prompt. So this is just, you know, the same thing that we always have in any sort of voice AI agent or any sort of AI agent workflow we got to make the main prompt and here we'll paste in the prompt. It's very simple. All I want this agent to do is get my name, ask if I want to know the time and then use a function that we're going to give it to check the time. I've also given it some notes saying that everything that you output will be sent to a text to speech model and is therefore the speech in the conversation so that it knows, you know, I'm talking basically and that it knows that whatever it's going to output is talking. So it doesn't like tell me it's thoughts and things like that. And then I also told it be as natural as possible and authentic. If there are moments where you might think about something then add um like etc in your output to make it more natural then i'm also going to put in the welcome message ai begins with your defined message so this will basically mean that when i press test the ai will ask me hello how can i help you today as soon as i kind of press that button and i just think it's better in the conversation when the ai initiates the conversation then we have the option to choose three different voices, which is what currently OpenAI allows for the real-time API. So we have Echo. Let's listen to what that sounds like. Hey there, Echo, your friendly AI buddy, here to offer guidance and solutions. Okay, so uh, it's all right. Hi, Shimmer here, your friendly AI, committed to improving your day with quick help and reliable information. I quite like Shimmer. I think she has a decently realistic sounding voice. And now Alloy. Welcome. Alloy at your service, designed to simplify your tasks and answer your queries. Yeah, for me, Shimmer's the best, so I'm gonna stick with Shimmer. That's what we already had. Uh, the next part we wanna do is add the actual function. So we can go into functions, press add, and then a custom function. So as you can see, um, Retail AI already has some templates. So you can give it an end call function, a call transfer function, a check calendar availability, which is using and powered by cow.com, which is a open source calendar booking software like Calendly. Book on the calendar, press digit, this is using IVR navigation and then a custom function. So because we're just using a kind of quick, simple check time function, which just calls a make.com scenario here, as you can see, which takes the webhook response, as you can see, check time, and then just sends back the time is now. Now is a built in a date function in make.com that just simply responds back with the date. So this is what the agent will be getting. The time is 2024, 10, 31, T, 10, 21, 17, 7, 6, 2, which would be the milliseconds in that. So in order to get the custom function set up for the real-time API phone agent, we're gonna give it a name. So I'm gonna name it check time, a description. So this function calls a server request to check the current time. Then what we are going to do is paste in that web 
uh, poke URL that you saw in the scenario. And then usually the functions that you are or you're building would have some sort of parameters. So if you know what I mean by the parameters, you know, the agent might pass the name or the email or whatever. But because we're just checking the time, unless we had a time zone parameter, we don't need any parameters for this function as I'm just kind of demoing things and, and I want to make it more simple. Then you can also choose for it to speak during execution. And this basically allows the agent to say something like, let me check that for you if the function takes over two seconds, but I'm just going to keep it to speak after execution. So basically the function will run silently and then the agent will just like get back that result and then say its response after using the function. Now there are different like things you can do in retail, not just functions and prompt. You can add a knowledge base, which I'm not going to be doing in this video. As in this video, I just want to show you how to create a prompt, add a function. And then which is a big part of this video is how to add Twilio phone number to retail AI and then actually deploy this agent. So I'm going to name it time real time API agent because it's checking the time. Like I said, you have different settings like speech settings. So you can add some sort of a background sound like a coffee shop, a convention hall, a somewhat outdoor responsiveness. You can choose how responsive it is. This is actually quite useful um, when I'm playing around with retail AI. We can um, help to make the responsiveness a little bit slower because sometimes these AI agents actually interrupt too much. We can boost certain keywords. So for example, if we know we're going to say the word retail AI, for example, simple as that a lot, but the transcription model is likely not going to get it right. We can deal with that by boosting it and so many more settings out there, which I'm not going to go into in this video as it's just not really my main goal of this video. So now what we can do is run this scenario in make.com so that, you know, it is able to process data that comes in, test the agent and see if we have got it to work. And then we can get to deploying the agent. Hello. How can I help you today? Hi there. Um, I don't know really. How can you help me? Hi there. Well, to start, could you tell me your name? And would you like to know the current time? I can help with that. Yeah, my name's Hugo. Nice to meet you, Hugo. Would you like to know the current time? Yeah, let's do it. All right, Hugo. The current time is 10.35 a.m. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, that'll be it. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So 10.35 a.m. That is the correct time. If we look at make.com, you'll see that the time is 2024, 10.31, which is the date. And then the actual time is 10.35 and then 05 seconds and 0.906 milliseconds, which is a bit overkill. But um, the agent was able to call a function, give that back. It spoke well, didn't interrupt me. It was quick latency, etc. The real-time API is very powerful. Like I said, I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you know what the real-time API is. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. It was a good find example conversation. Now, the next thing we want to do is actually connect our Twilio number so that we have this AI agent that we just built this time real time API agent, but that is accessible on the phone so that I can call on my phone a number and start to speak to the time real time API agent, ask it for the time but via a phone number so that we can actually see how this can be utilized in real world use cases. Okay, so the phone number process for retail AI is a little bit more difficult than other platforms like Vapi. If you look, if I connect my number, via SIP trunking, you can already see there might be things that you're not used to, like a termination URI, a SIP trunk username, SIP trunk password. And so we need to deal with this all in Twilio itself. So if you don't have a Twilio account, then simply go onto Twilio, sign up, I'm going to log in. And once you get to this dashboard, you will be able to have this search panel up here. And what we want to do is search up SIP trunk and click on this first option right here, elastic SIP trunks. Then we want to do is just create a new SIP. IP trunk, give it a name. So I'm going to call this YouTube demo just so I know what exactly I'm creating this trunk for. Once we get to these general settings, we have to do two things and that is enable the call transfer SIP refer and enable the PSTN transfer. Then we can just hit save and wait until Twilio tells me I've saved it. So let me try that again. Okay. So you have successfully updated your trunk. That is good. Then as you can see on this little dashboard section on the left, this little panel, we have the option for general termination, origination and numbers. We want to jump into termination as this is uh, one of the things we're going to do for this termination URI. Now we have the termination SIP URI, which is needed in retail AI. Again, if I were to go into this, you can see we need the termination URI here. And so what we will do is just again, give it a name. So I'm going to call this YouTube demo retail and that is it. And then as you can see, it is available. So that is good. The next thing we need to do is add credentials. So we're just going to create new credentials list. Call this again, whatever we want, friendly name wise. So I'm just going to call this 
YouTube credentials. And then for the username, we want to have whatever we want. So this doesn't really matter. I'm going to call this YouTube underscore retail underscore Hugo underscore one, two, three. And then I'm actually just going to take that and make it the password as well and press create. Now we have everything done on this termination side of things. So we can press save. Next thing we need to do is go into origination. So as you can see, we are on this page now. And what we want to do is add a new origination SIP URI. And for this origination SIP URI, this is a URI that we need to get directly from retail. So in their documentation, we have this custom telephony um, section, which they talk about how to set this up, which is where I got all my information from. And you just have to copy this. I will leave this just in the description so you can copy it from the description so you don't have to deal with going onto the documentation. And then we can just press add. Once we've pressed add, we can go into the number section. This is where you actually add a number to this SIP trunking setup. And then what I'm going to do is press add a number. I'm going to actually buy a new number. And for this, I'm going to use a UK number. And then I don't really need fax necessarily. So I'm going to press search this one, whatever, buy. That's all I need. It doesn't matter too much about the number. Next, I will say that this will be for a business assign approved bundle. So as you can see, I've purchased the number, then we can add that number to the um, SIP trunking. Now we can copy this number and take it into retail AI phone number section, grab the termination URI. So that was back into termination and we can grab this. So it is the whole link over here, paste that in there, make sure that there is no space in between that part SIP trunk username. So then I'll put the username that I've put for that credentials part and the password, which like I said, was the same. We can press save. And now you can see my number is there. We can choose an inbound call agent. So I'm going to choose the time time real time API agent. Now I'm not going to choose anything for the um, outbound call agent because this doesn't matter for me right now. And now let's go onto my phone and actually try to call this agent. Okay, so now what I can do is actually put that number in into my phone, give it a ring, I'll put it on speaker so you guys can hear talk to this time phone AI agent, ask it for the time or get it to tell me the time and then we can see this agent, you know, work via a phone call. So if I dial the number and start to ring it, put it on speaker. Hello, how can I help you today? Hi there. Hey there. Uh, may I know your name? Yeah, my name is Hugo. Nice to meet you, Hiba. Sorry, Would sorry, you like sorry. To know the time? No, my name is Hugo, actually. Hugo. Got it. Hugo. Would you like to know the time? Yeah, let's do it. What's the time? It's 11.16 a.m. right now. Okay, cool. Glad I could help. Anything else you need? Uh, no. I'll be it. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, so as you can see, uh, I mean, it might be a bit blurry because my camera doesn't autofocus, but it is 11.16 and it was able to speak to me via the phone. I just called the number. As you saw, it had one dial and then it picked up and that shows you that the agent is kind of connected to the phone number. Now, imagine this agent wasn't a simple agent like that, where it's just kind of a demo, just showcasing that you can deploy the real-time API on a phone very easily on this platform called Retail. And just imagine it is an agent that is able to, I don't know, take your healthcare appointment clinic in inbound requests, for example, can I book an appointment? The person calls the phone number, asks, oh, could I book an appointment with uh, Dr. John at 7 p.m. tomorrow? My leg's really hurting, whatever it is. The agent checks its function with the function that we have is check time, but the function we give this example is, I don't know, check calendar availability. It checks the calendar, checks to see if tomorrow at 7 p.m. is free. If it is free, it tells it, do you wanna confirm that booking at that time? The person on the phone says, yep, this sounds good to me. It books the calendar now that healthcare clinic has a booked appointment with the person that called or dialed this phone inbound without having to do any work on their own as this AI voice agent is able to handle all of that themselves. Like I said, this technology is really, really powerful and you extract all that value when you start to implement it into the real world.